everyone. Welcome back to my Getting Started with Pro Tools series. If you haven't seen the previous video, I do recommend starting there for more information about what I'll be covering and understanding more about some of the parameters you need to consider before starting a project in Pro Tools. We left off after creating a new project. So right now, we're looking at a blank session. If you played around with any kind of audio editing software, you might recognize a few things. We have a timeline along the top, and what's called the transport here, which includes your play, stop, and record controls. So this isn't completely unlike anything we've ever seen before. Now, if you've ever played with programs like Audacity or WavePad, you might be thinking that all we need to do is press the record button, and we'll immediately start recording from whatever device Pro Tools recognized automatically. The program creates a new track, and we see waveforms, if everything is connected properly. Pro Tools actually works a bit different than this. Instead, we actually have to have a track in place before we start recording. The key to think about here is that tracks are containers for our audio. While other programs like Audacity will create them for you to keep things as simple as possible, Pro Tools, on the other hand, expects you to know what you'll need beforehand and wants you to prep ahead of time. I know it's a little confusing right now, but once you start working with more than one track at a time, you really start to see why this is actually a good thing. So to add tracks to our session, we need to either go to the track dropdown or use the keys Shift Command N or Shift Control N on Windows. This gives us a dialog box for picking out how many and what kind of tracks we want to add to our project. I'll talk more about track types eventually, but right now we really just need to know if the tracks we're adding are mono, which means one channel of audio, or stereo, which is two channels. So here's a good rule of thumb for figuring out if you want to use a mono or a stereo track. If you're recording someone's voice or most instruments, then you want to start with mono. This is because the sound you're creating is really coming from just one source and from one direction, so you only need one channel of audio. On top of this, unless you very specifically purchased a stereo recording device with the express intention of recording in stereo, basically all microphones and instruments are mono devices. If you record them in stereo, you're either duplicating the exact same information to the other half of the track, or in some cases, you pick up a little bit of leftover sound from the back of the mic and you get a duplicate that's smaller and sounds even worse. Now, if you are pulling in pre-existing audio, like music or sound effects, start with stereo. Most sound effects and music are created specifically to be played back in stereo. So we want them to live in stereo tracks when we add them to our Pro Tools session. For now, we're just going to talk about working with a single mono audio track from a microphone. So let's go ahead and add that. Great, now we have a track. I can make the track wider here by using the grabber tool, and we can zoom in on the timeline with the magnifying glass tool here. By far the best shortcut I've ever learned in Pro Tools is using Command or Control for Windows, and then the two square bracket keys to zoom in and out more efficiently. I use this shortcut all the time and it saves me a lot of time not having to go back and forth with my mouse. So what we need to do is make sure that the track we plan to record into is armed or prepared to record by clicking this little record button in the top left-hand side of the track. Well, the Audacity folks might be thinking, okay, now we have a track. If we press record this time, now we'll start to see audio. Unfortunately, the record light is still blinking, but we're not recording. So why is that? A major reason Pro Tools is difficult to wrap your head around is that it's built with the expectation of being used in a full studio environment, where you're recording from more than one microphone at a time. A typical band is usually gonna have something like a dozen or more microphones or sound sources coming in all at once. And that's not something Audacity would handle. Pro Tools, on the other hand, is built with that in mind. It might not make as much sense if it's just you and a single microphone, but you can still make it work for you just fine. As soon as I do that, notice that I'm immediately seeing levels in the monitor strip here. That's great. 
That means the track sees my microphone, which tells us we're headed in the right direction. When a track is armed, it means that the track is going to start recording audio from its source whenever the session record begins. So now that the track is armed, we can click the session record button in the transport. But we're still going to hang out in limbo until we press the space bar to actually start recording. I know this seems like overkill to have to click a button and then press a key. But again, this workflow is keeping in mind the needs of a studio rather than one person on a laptop. As an alternative, if you have a keyboard with a numeric pad, you can just press the number three to accomplish the exact same thing. So we'll try that now instead. Awesome. We can see the red region indicates that we're recording in real time. And if your input source is hooked up correctly, we can also see waveforms indicating the sound you're recording into Pro Tools. If you don't see waveforms, don't start to panic. We're going to talk about that in the next video. Right now, if you've successfully started recording like this, you're doing great. We can click on the stop button in the transport or press the space bar again to stop the recording. That's it. We have our first bit of audio, or what I'll be calling a region. That's all we're going to cover for this video. Even if you weren't able to successfully record something this time, please check out the next video so you can learn your way around settings a bit better, in case something does go wrong. Once you're familiar with the settings, it's a lot easier to solve these problems without losing a lot of time researching them.